I want to really hone in that we love using luxury fabrics, construction, and finishes uh, to kind of elevate us from a lot of the fast fashion that's in the market now um, that's really quickly put together. And again, we want to create the Atashi world, which would be an inclusive brand universe, and we do that through our PR marketing, our website, social media, and customer service. We also include other communities, um, even modest communities, through our accessories, design detail, and fit. In one of our key signatures for the first collection are these rumpled wings. Um, those can be an awesome bias. Um, through play, again, Atashi is a very playful brand. Um, and it has to look cute. That's my, that's my catchphrase. It has to be cute. Okay, so um, Dr. Kaufman is going to take us through a brief overview of the history of gender fluid fashion. So really quickly, like I said earlier, it's nothing that new. I mean, it's gone on in every, from throughout the ages. So, you know, one of the examples is um, the man with the giant wig was from the, the 1700s, a uh, British, young British men who went to the continent and visited Italy and France and came back to England wearing makeup and wearing big wigs and these are not men who were homosexual. They were aggressively heterosexual, but they, they had lots of products and, and feminine dress and, and wigs and so on. And it was just a lifestyle manifestation. Um, at Louis XVI's court, again, uh, gender was, the, the dress codes separated the gender. So masculine, uh, Men did wear wigs, and they wore powdered wigs and makeup, and they wore frilly coats and, and tight pants, but they, that was considered male dress, and women wore big gowns and also big hair, more like him. So, um, it, but again, this isn't, you know, the macaronis were what they called the British gentlemen who were all that. It wasn't about a sexual issue, it was more a questioning of masculine identity. It wasn't, you know, about what their sex was. Um, then, you know, fast forward to the 60s, again, anything was going, um, and you saw a dress between men and women. I mean, even just Mick Jagger and Bianca Jagger, she's dressing in a vaguely masculine outfit, and he's dressing in a dress. And, and Jimi Hendrix with wild prints and wild uh, feathers and boas and things, you know, he was not at all feminine. Um, and, and David Bowie, who was really fluid in, in all of his characters and all of his, his uh, they were characters more than costumes, you know? So I guess he really embodies the idea of fluidity. Um, now, Annette Grace Jones is from the 80s, if you don't recognize her, but you know, gender fluid representation in fashion and fashion media, is, it's everywhere right now. Um, I have a slide later at the end about Pharrell Williams just became the new fashion designer for Louis Vuitton and had his first menswear collection last week. And there's all sorts of gender fluid clothing in it. I mean, it is for hip hop artists. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's not just a trend though. We have to emphasize it's not just a trend, it's a, it's a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle for a lot of people. It's reality for a lot of people. So that's what's interesting about, I mean, I didn't say this in the beginning, but fashion is not about clothes, it's about people. And it's about what people want to wear. And, and the industry just gives people what they want. It's not about garments, okay? So that's important. And the difference over time has, is the degree of representation, how much people have been allowed to express themselves. Okay, so that's all about history. Uh, Walter's gonna take you through some of the definitions of gender fluid 
itself and then later of gender fluid fashion. Okay, so I'm gonna start with non-binary because I did say that word a lot. Non-binary can mean different things to different people. Also people that are non-binary, they also express themselves differently. Not every non-binary looks the same, okay? The term non-binary is often used to describe someone whose gender identity can't be described as exclusively woman or man, male or female. Okay, gender fluid can fall under the big umbrella term of non-binary gender expression. And it can fluctuate over periods of time. I've known several people whose expression has changed and they are expressing who they are currently. Okay, we go to the next slide. And see we have this diagram here. Non-binary is like the larger term and underneath you have androgynous gender fluid, agender, gender non-conforming, and gender queer. Sorry. And I don't want to bore you with all those definitions, so I'm not going to read them. <laughs> Dr. Thompson. Okay, the, um, the market itself is about, it's really about, um, it's built on a binary basis, but genera Generation Z is rejecting any kind of limitation of binary. They want it to be fluid. Um, and they don't want, their, the, the acceptance and the openness about it is what's really changed. That's not been the way before. A previous generations just didn't accept this. It's like, but now Generation Z is still, you know, they're so willing to accept it that it's driving it forward. Um, let's see if I can. So this slide also says the future is here, the time is now. I, I can't get the uh, Walter to move. But <laughs> the 56 percent of Generation Z shop across gender lines. That means. Boyfriends don't mind dressing in their girlfriend's clothes and girlfriends don't mind dressing in their boyfriend's clothes or their closets, you know? And if in shopping across means people don't mind dressing in what used to be the other sex. So we'll look at that a little bit more. 81% um, believe that people shouldn't be defined by their gender. And this is Generation Z. It's not in the other generations. <coughs> It's really a big change. Yeah, um, what age is Generation Z? Um, I'll show you in the, one of the next slides. Um, the drivers. So the drivers, this is what they want. Inclusivity, diversity, creativity. Um, Generation Z is 1995 to 2012. Born in 1995 to 2012. So, um, they identify as neither, they can identify as neither male nor female when, and that's what is called non-binary. And um, let's see if I can move Walter now. Whoops. Here. Is so, this an international phenomenon? Yes, this is an international phenomenon. It's not only happening in this country. That's an important distinction, in fact, Warren, thank you. Um, it's not just here, it's everywhere. It's happening slower in some countries where there's a little bit more um, religion or some, you know, like Spain is a little bit more Catholic about, you know, watch out, about expression, you know, or totalitarian cultures can be a little bit more, uh, you can't say anything or you might go to jail still. But, um, you know, but it's still happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere because young people are, they don't have the, I, they don't have the barriers that, that other generations had. Um, so one of the things like the first half of 2020, a minority of, it happened even in one year that a majority, a minority went to a majority of Generation Zers in 2020 where they started out that only a minority believed in more than two genders. And by the six months, Generation Z was the only US generation where a majority believed in two genders. 
okay, in more than two genders. And older generations didn't even register. So it's really happening with them. So in a, in, in a poll also in 2019, young adults, and this is just in the US, but young adults had increasingly supported, become increasingly supportive of transgender rights, and that was over the last five years, <coughs> and you know, celebrate the, their friends coming out as transgender. So it's really something that's happening with young people. Um, so again, what we like to say, whoops, and uh, I can't make this work. I don't want to get to it. But more than a fashion, gender fluid is a lifestyle. And, and the Fluid Project says we want to celebrate what makes us different and cherish what makes us the same. I think that says something really beautiful about this, you know? celebrate our differences, but cherish what makes us the same. Um, Jonathan W. Anderson. Um, Jonathan is, Walter, were you gonna do this? You wanted to present? Yes, this is just one of my fashion idols. I have loved him ever since I found out about him as dad. And he's, Kind of like I modeled a little bit of my world after um, because he was very dynamic in his gender expression, like even for his initial wins where his left shift may be so like more masculine but also kind of more high concept. Um, and his quote is just that fashion must get to a point where we don't have to talk about gender. And I feel like that's very important for the consumers of today and the future that Fashion is about, again, their expression of themselves to where it's like not even about the gender or the sex anymore. I'm just wearing it because I like it and it makes me feel good. And I think that's, again, a challenge that all businesses will have to face because how are you going to shop? So I think that's what we're working towards um, in the fashion retailing landscape. So the, the definitions of... Uh gender fluid fashion, again, it doesn't, it's like the idea that we don't want to limit um, it to a traditional menswear definition or a traditional women's wear definition. It's something totally new. And the idea is that any given ensemble um, is fluid. So it disregards that association between men and women. Um, pants and men, skirts and women are, you know, men can wear skirts and, and, and women can wear pants. And it's sort of been that way for a while, right? But um, some experts are saying that gender clothing doesn't really have to do with the brands or the